Well, it's that time of the week again. It's Aussie Tech Heads. This time it's episode 328. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Lounge. Welcome, p- p- podcasters, listeners, and uh, YouTubers, whoever you are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight is recording uh, live. And if you want to watch it live every week, it's on aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live. Welcome to the lounge who squeeze in every every week to watch us all record live. So this episode is on the 14th of the 2nd, 2013, Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Hope you gave your loved one a big kiss and some flowers. Uh, all right, Aussie Tech Heads, our show is brought to you by their hosting team who work tire- tirelessly to bring you uh, fast, professional and affordable web hosting. So if you need some hosting for your web page or you're sick and tired of the hosting that you've got, come and have a look at us. It's uh, hosting, it's all at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting. Can't get any better than that. Uh, now, what else have we got? We've got um, before the show every week, we have got the replay of techwebcast.info. You go and check those guys out. They uh, got a good show. They've got uh, guests on and interviews and all the good stuff and some news as well and the video of the tonight's recording can be seen also from the home page just click on the video at the front of the aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast and uh, that now the podcast homepage can now be reached by that link How's that? How's that going, eh? Oh, I'm on top of things. <laughs> and <laughs> you can also get the a paper delivered to your stream, to your iPad, to wherever you want. It's uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper. It's tech news. It's got a bit of business news. It's got a bit of everything from uh, contributors from all around the world. So uh, just have a look at that. That's not too bad either. And also, if you need tech news in your Twitter stream every half an hour, just follow at Aussie Tech News. All right, now let's get straight into it tonight. There is no Eric. He is still unavailable. He's away. He's going to have a big note, long note from his mum when he comes back, I tell you. But uh, tonight, and Shane. <laughs> he's he, bloody better. He, Shane is uh, on Valentine's Day, so he's got previous commitments. And we welcome Will and Garth is in live in the Aussie Tech Edge studio. Let's go and see Will first. How are you going, Will? How are we doing? Good. I'm well, here this week. That's uh Good computer that actually almost functions so it's great good so you you've uh rebuilt your computer or you got a, a new one or something yeah a uh, anonymous uh listener um well he's not anonymous to me i know who he is but <laughs> <laughs> he's got to remain anonymous to you guys uh he was kind enough to basically donate me a new system so um sweet as so that was pretty cool basically it's just just to give you a quick rundown it's uh and the new amd 4.2 gig uh eight core um processor on a, I don't know, what's the board? It's a MSI, MSI motherboard, um, 16 gig of RAM. Yeah, those, uh, I got... those MSI motherboards, do they have that feature where you can flash the BIOS pretty easily? Is that them? This actually, more than that, this thing, uh, this particular motherboard actually has, what do they call it? Um, I'm quickly looking, I can't remember what it's called. Wink, I think it's called Wink, but what it actually is, is it has that pre-boot boot, so you can literally um, boot it up, You've got your normal BIOS, which is a fully featured BIOS. It's kind of like more advanced than early early Windows was in some respects. And then you can boot up into Wink. I think it's called Wink or Winky. And what it does is it uh, lets you basically use a Linux desktop within a couple of seconds that loads up. Yeah, and uh, yeah, nice. so if you click on if you click on Update BIOS, it will load a particular chunk of this operating system take you to straight to the web page straight to the update download it install it done nice um yeah it's great it's same with overclocking it will overclock it it will go in it will load up this wink run a cpu load test make sure it's good and then bail you back into your your, your normal thing so it's um it's really fascinating playing with these new dual boot, dual boot bias things um if you just wanted to go into Skype or do some email or jump on the net, you could just quickly load it up, do what you need to do, and get out in you know ten seconds. Mm. So good. So yeah, good. So I got that. I got two uh, two gigabyte um, HD seven seventy seven seventy HD seventy seven seventy. Definitely yeah, from China. Seventy seven fifty gigabyte. Um, Video cards, they're both dual head video cards running Crossfire. So I've got four monitors, which some of you guys may have seen on my Facebook earlier. Yes, sweetness. So, um, so yeah. Good stuff. And so the audio, physical audio mix is coming soon. 
Yeah, uh, um, another person I know who works in the industry refits uh, studios and things like that. So I should actually be getting a studio mixer. It's like a hundred and fifty channel mixer, so it's a little bit of overkill. But <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'll probably, I'll probably like, um, I don't know, screw that to the wall or something. I'm Just not cut sure half where I'm off and send it to me. <laughs> Cut it, cut it in half. Get, take the hacksaw too. <laughs> now that that other voice you can hear is Garth, and he is live in the Aussie Tech Head Studio. Hi, how's Garth. It go, how's it going, Glenno? Good. And what have you been up to? We haven't uh, heard or seen you for a while. Oh, I don't know. I've been up too much. You? Been, yeah, uh, yeah. Just just plugging along. Plugging along. How's your? Uh, uh, you've got IBT. you've got your yeah your your website uh, iBlindTech.com. Yeah. iBlindTech.com. Yeah. Now tell us what, what just a little bit about that again. iBlindTech is basically there to help. Um, vision impaired people or blind people using iOS. Right. So getting started tips and podcasts on, on the basics around using iOS when you're blind. You're with voiceover, <laughs> the built-in screen reader. Yeah. Nice. Will, Will thinks that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I was just reading the chat. Oh, dear. It was just a very appropriate comment. <laughs> but what was for that? The, for those... <laughs> For those on the pod, on the audio, I'll explain. Uh, Garth has got a pop filter, and a big pro- ass pop filter. Is, so, oh, so which large. is a big circular thing that he's holding over the top of the microphone, so you don't get those, you know, the real p in, in your ears. And uh, but it, it's that big that uh, that's only the top of it's in shot. And the and the lounge has commented that it looks like he you, that he's chewing Mickey's ear. <laughs> It is, yeah it, it, yeah, it could be mistaken for Mickey's ear. It could be. But uh, sorry, Garth, we interrupt now. Well, I, I think we covered that story right. anyway. So that's, <laughs> I, think, I think Mickey's ear is... So now you, you've, got, uh, you've got uh, audio on there. You've got little little Yeah, it's all podcasts. just audio stuff. Yeah, um, and, yeah, 15 to half an hour long. Yep. Sort of and so it guides uh, people through how to navigate around your devices and do certain just things. different, yeah, different basic stuff, you know. Yeah, good. Um, good yeah. stuff. Good. Yeah. All right. Go now, well. yeah. So uh, I think we're we're up to speed <laughs> with everything. <laughs> now, Garth has recorded. Uh, he's came, he has he has come over to the studio last week and has recorded another series of these iOS reviews for us, and um, we'll start those off next week. So I can't wait for those. There's some Sounds beauties like in there. Plan. There is some beauties. All right. Now let's get into. Well, first things first. We've got an email uh, from. Uh, Joseph, I think it was. He wasn't happy with my pronunciation. <laughs> I don't, and I don't <coughs> blame him either. It was probably totally wrong. Uh, of the Nokia, yeah, I don't see. I can't remember how I. Uh, uh, yeah, it has the Nokia Lumina. Lumia. Lumia. Lumina. That's what he said. So, yeah. so it's Lumia. I must have said Lumina. So there you it's go. It's a Chevy Chevy Lumina. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> or the Nokia yeah. Lumia. Not not a huge difference. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, they're pretty much useless pieces of iron. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So thanks for. Uh, so that's that's where we're gonna we're gonna hear a lot from the pronunciator. If you heard last week's episode. <laughs> oh, not the freaking pronunciator. <laughs> the pronunciator. He's come Bring on board. Back. So if there's anything that we're not sure of, he's gonna he's gonna come to our aid. So um, we'll hear from him probably <laughs> probably sooner than. Have we got an later. Aussie pronunciator? That's what we need. No, we've only got the <laughs> we've only got the the um, uh, American, the so Seppo. Just stick O on the end of whatever it says, and we'll be sweet. <laughs> That's the pronunciator. <laughs> All right, and uh, look, another little one I come across this week was I uh, remember we had a go at this as well. Stickem, you remember Stickem? Stickem, yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was another video streaming site, uh, and you could actually you could you could. Pretty much mer- mix the videos as you went on the go, sort of thing, you know. So you had a had a your, your streaming box in the middle, and you had your other feeds going down the side, and then you just uh, the uh, organizer or the host could choose which feed went into the to the live stream. But anyway, not no more. It's uh, very sad to announce that Stickem has closed down, effective February one. So it's already gone. Okay, it's gone. Well, it's lucky you reminded us because I don't know. Did anyone remember who they were anyway? No, yeah, well, actually, it's funny you should say that. They released a major update for their iPhone app uh, a couple of weeks back, and I was actually last weekend streaming on Stickem to test it out. Yeah, okay. And okay. I really, really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <then. I> actually, <laughs> so that's why I shut down, see, because I finally found a service I liked. Well, we did. They went, nah, <laughs> screw you. Well, so it's Will's fault, everybody. If you had, yeah, if you had... exactly. <laughs> oh, um, I, I would say I, I haven't read the story that Glenn's got there. I'm, I'm going to take a guess and say it was due to bandwidth costs. 
Yeah, they didn't say. This is just a little press release that they've got on their uh, site. Uh, but we we tried stick them uh, a while ago now, a while ago, and it was good. The only reason mm. I think that we didn't stick with stick them was that uh, our bandwidth at the time wasn't good enough mm. for it because you needed a fair bit of upload speed. And I think at the time we only uh, were yeah. pushing, well, I was only pushing maybe. I don't know if that back then, was, geez, I might have been on cable, which gave us what yeah, one twenty eight or something. Yeah, it was but pretty it was bad. Uh, it was that plus it was the lag because I only had American servers. But recently mm. they'd kind of fixed that. They they had uh, put some. I think I put some New Zealand servers in. They'd really worked on their code. It was nice and tidy, and it's just bizarre that it just kind of went away. So mm. do they just never um, find a way to monetize it? Well, Maybe not. they had. They had in well, not in stream ads. They had web like ads around the outside and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. Look, I I kind of there's a I'm looking at um, some websites on it now. And a lot of people seem to think that they'll per, per, yeah, purchase by somebody else for their technology um, okay. because they had a really good technology. I mean, there are similar things. There's uh, Mondo Club, which is a site I used to use. Um, I've tried them as well. There's Blog TV, but yeah, it would be interesting to see if something similar to Stick and Pop pops up in the next, you know, few months. The only thing, like, there's nothing that I, or you might be able to put put me uh, straight here, Will. But there's nothing that really comes to, uh, to be similar to the live stream what we use now, as far as as um, a continuous rolling playback of of content. Like, um, there is a few. There's there's Twitch. There's uh, you know, you stream, but at, for, at least for us in, in Australia with the configuration that we have and the, the pretty ordinary bandwidth that we have, um, live stream seems to handle it the best. It's not, it's not the best site. There are definitely better streaming services, but for, for our situation, for the way we use it and, and you know, f well, live stream has Australian, if not Australian servers, they at least have Australian routing in place. Mm. So... Because I was actually last weekend, I was I tested five different streaming services, everything from Hangout, Livestream, Ustream, Justin TV, Twitch, which are actually now integrated into the same site, uh, and another one I can't think of off the top of my head. And out of all of them, Livestream gave consistently the best. Yeah, right. Best results. Yeah, it's just the back ends. Um, I don't like the back. It's a flash back end. The, I don't. I hate it. No, the back end's horrid. They do have their producer thing which is a program and it's just as bad mm, mm. Um, because but, I, I looked into yeah. I had a uh, had a complaint from uh, PA today that there was no live streaming to mobile through the live stream app so I had a quick mm. look into it tonight and that's because to be able to stream live to the mobile it has to be h.264 uh, video and also AAC audio and I can't. I can. I know we can push out the H.264 video through the Vid Blaster. This is the software that we record with, but I'm not sure that it can push out the AAC. So, are you using Vid Blaster or are you using Flash Media Encoder? Um. Well, doesn't Vid Blaster push it through <coughs> Flash somehow through Flash Media Encoder? It depends how you've got it set up. If you've got it set up properly, it will, and then you change your settings in Flash Media Encoder, and it'll send it out. Okay. Should we'll, be able to send it. We might be able to look. We might look into that. So I'll 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 get Will onto that. <laughs> will might be able to look into that. <laughs> so. All right, so uh, yeah, so yeah, so no more stick them. Uh, if you have, for some reason, got some content there that you want to keep, they will let you download it up until the end of the month. So you can yeah, they say that, but their websites were down. Hmm. And when I've been trying to go to their website and it doesn't work. When Stick'em launched in 2005, uh, uh, they were the very first website devoted to live streaming, user generated video, and chat. So there you go. So there's another one gone. Another one bites mm -hmm. the dust. All right. Now, we'll get into some stories. It's a story now. And this one probably will go on for a little while. Hopefully not. But it might. <laughs> <laughs> because cause we've spoke about this a bit before. But this week it's sort of coming to a head, uh, I, I think, with um, the cost of goods that we the co – well, cost of goods in general. Because I've got a graphic here that that is just a bit crazy. I don't know if you've seen it or not. But the, it's not just the cost of goods but the cost of software. Now, I'll show you. I'll, we'll go First things first, we'll go to this graphic. And it's got here, um, this is the cost of being an Aussie. Okay, so now you've got, say, a Big Mac, 
Okay, so in Australia, it's $4.70. Um, and then around the world, you've got four twenty five, four eleven. Oh, who's five twenty three? Canada. Who's, who's that? Canada. Geez, they're getting Gee. they're getting screwed on Big Macs. But anyway, we're fourteen uh, percent higher than the the average the the lowest Big Mac. Petrol, we're at a dollar forty five. Um, the only other country more than us is New Zealand, dollar seventy nine. This is all in Australia. It's all converted back to Australian dollars. Look, there's a look. If go to the show notes, AussieTechheads.com.au, and have a look at the show notes. There's a graphic in the show notes. But we've got petrol. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got Gillette Razor. Why would they pick that? I would have no idea. But thirty two dollars twenty four Australian, seventeen dollars, seventeen dollars over in the U. Hey, uh, they got well, this jeans. Is why I don't shave anymore. Yeah, jeans. We've got $109. The cheapest there is 53 That's in the in Canada. Yeah, so it goes through everything. Jack, Jack Daniels, and we all know we paid too much for that. iPads, TVs, Nike runners, Colgate toothpaste, and HP black printer. There's all premiums. There's you know, 54% higher, 31% higher, 37% higher. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a joke. But the current federal parliamentary inquiry into IT pricing has helped to raise awareness of just how expensive many goods are in Australia, uh, this guy, Dr. Dennis, said. It emerged on Monday that tech giants such as Apple, Microsoft and Adobe had received summonses to appear for, uh, in front of a committee of politicians probing the prices um, – the prices of the, the, for the amount of that we pay for the software. Now, beforehand, this was a voluntary, well, maybe not, well, I suppose you could call it a voluntary front, front up, uh, but I think most of them uh, submitted written submissions, and uh, but they, they weren't too keen on doing it. But now that's a summons, now they've got to attend. So Dr. Um, Dr. Dennis said it emerged on Monday that these tech giants, Apple, Microsoft and Adobe, had each received a summons to appear from, in form of, uh, from a committee of politicians probing the prices of, for the software uh, that we pay for software games, devices and downloads. Dr. Dennis said the free trade agreement between Australia and the US had the capacity to force American companies to offer their wares on more reasonable terms. So, um, and he, then he went on to say, Australia doesn't need to change the terms of the free trade agreement. Its terms need to be implemented. So there you go. Now, while Australians do pay more for more than most around the uh, around the world for what we need and we want, we also earn more than most. So I suppose everything in its in its uh, you know res- respective things. If you look at it, yeah, yeah, I wonder if they added that to that equation. If you looked at it in terms of you know, no income because we we can pay. We can pay sixty percent more for something. Our wages aren't sixty percent higher. Mm. Well, the OECD, you- yeah, the OECD data show average earnings in the US dollar terms are thirty-seven percent higher than here. What does it say? Thirty-seven. Yeah, that sounds about right. Show average earnings in in US dollar terms are thirty-seven percent higher here than in America, and yep. nearly fifty percent better than in the UK. We earn a third more than Canadians. And it doesn't track New Zealand, but our wages are reportedly 15% higher than uh, Kiwis. So if you okay, put those so things against those other ones, we're not doing too bad in that respect. So you said, what did you say, 60% we earn more? Uh, 37% more than, than the US. Um, yes. Okay, so, so we're, we're I'll, go through this chart that, you know, I'll go through this chart that I have here. Okay, so you're saying 37%. So iTunes, new release music, uh, we pay 67% more. Uh, Call, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, modern, modern warfare was uh, $20 in the States. It's $90 here. That's 340% more. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, Windows mm. Vista uh, is 77% more. <laughs> Let's Sony not call AT&T it back MP3. to Windows Vista. Come on. What about Windows Sony 8? 8, Sony MP3 is 72% more. HP Office Jet Pro, 83% more. Microsoft Excel is 33% more. Windows 7 Home Premium, 47% more. Office for Mac, 31% more. Um, so that's irrelevant that, that we earn from, 30% more. No, they, when's that list um, from? Because uh, that sounds uh, like a really uh, nicely cherry-picked list. of make, Let's make it sound really bad. Well, this, this is particularly IT-based, this particular story, but it's the same sort of principle. They're yeah. actually talk, the, the actual article is having a go at Apple because they're saying that a 13-inch Apple MacBook Pro cost us $1,400 and it costs 1200 for Americans. So um, 1200 to 1400 that's what? 
one sixteen percent more thereabouts. Yeah. So 16% more. There's a the the Apple prices lately, I, I know they used to be really bad, but I don't think they're too bad these days. If you look at the cost of a new Mac or a new iPad or whatever, whenever we see ads over here for the American pricing, we forget that they haven't got their sales tax added on, which we you know we've got the GST already in there. So if you, if you add that price, yeah, on, but this is including sales tax. It's not a huge difference anymore, and it's certainly not thirty-seven. Well, Apple have, have dropped the price of the MacBook Airs this week. Apparently. Yeah, I saw that. And MacBook Pros. Or was Probably it MacBook Pros was it? Sorry. Oh, no, both Due for the new ones to be coming the, out. The um, fifteen, thirteen, and fifteen-inch Retinas mm. have been dropped and had their. Um, some of them, depending on the model, some of them have had the processor increased. So more RAM. Yeah, so and so the, and the um, MacBook Airs as well, the thirty-inch MacBook Air. So a story that's been getting around the traps this week is, is the story as follows: that um, well, Adobe that Adobe has has cut the price of their online subscription uh, from sixty-two ninety-nine to forty-nine ninety-nine, bringing that in line with the US. Now, uh, now a quick price comparison between Adobe's US and Australian online stores shows shows there is quite a big difference in the prices here than what you would pay in the US. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so almost $2,000 difference on a piece of software distributed through an online store. Uh, it's cheaper, and it, as this article, I think it was, was it Gizmodo or some? I'm not sure where the article originated from, but um, it, uh, it's sort yeah. of got around the traps. But it, 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 they costed it all out, pretty much costed pretty much it all out. It's, it's cheaper to fly from here, from Sydney to LA, <laughs> buy it, and come home. Beautiful. By doing yep. that, they'd save, you would save $601 and get uh, frequent fly points. That's crazy, yep. isn't it? That's just so you crazy. could fly yeah. to the US, creative, come back. Creative Suite, creative Suite Master 6 collection is 4,334 here, and it's $2,599 in the US. So that's $1,735 difference. The return flight costs you 1100 $1, bucks. <laughs> so well, yeah, you, so, you, so you're going to be better a, off six hundred dollars. <laughs> so there's a whole heap of IT pros out there, putting slipping backhanders to mm. um, Adobe to keep the prices up, so they get to have all these trips to the US. Well, that's right. Why wouldn't you? You could go and do a few other things over there. You could write it off as a tax I, dodge. Absolutely. Well, you could. I think what it comes down to is it's just all PR because the stuff that people see are things like the any subscription. Um, you know, subscription services and things like that, which is why they lulled them. Although they're still dearer, they're better than they were. Um, because I was reading something about they're trying to uh, open a store in Australia. Uh, Who, in Adobe? Australia? Well, they did. Yeah, Adobe. They... But the, these, yeah, but these prices have basically the the whole PR side of it backfired on them, and this whole price comparison thing has pretty much made it irrelevant that anybody's even realised they've opened a store. Mm. Well, they did. Um, the CEO of Adobe has defended his company's pricing structure for Australia while refusing to explain why Australian customers pay more for the software. So, head of one of the world's biggest software companies, this guy, Shin, Sh Shantanu Narayan, he was in Sydney to cut the ribbon on Adobe's new store. Mm. So, in Sydney, accompanied by Federal Communications Minister Stephen Conroy and New South Wales Premier Barry Farrell, O'Farrell. So He'd go to an opening of an envelope, wouldn't he? <laughs> anyway, Conroy. Conroy. Put <laughs> yes. uh, the photo up. <laughs> Who gave him the sharp scissors? When asked during a, a media <laughs> briefing today to explain Adobe's high prices in Australia, the Narayan, whatever that is, repeatedly dodged questions on the matter, saying that uh, that the company was focusing on its new as-a-service offering, uh, cr the Creative Cloud. Now, I've got a couple of pictures here for those of you who are on the video. This is a couple of little pictures of what it's like inside the new office. As you can see, it's in Sydney. As you can see, it's up high. So maybe that's why we, where our software is dearer. Maybe the rents a lot, which I think has got a, a yeah. contributing factor. But but you know, what what if it's it's just no, a call center? That doesn't make any sense because they open an office and they drop their prices. So that's that doesn't yeah. make any well, sense. Well, they're forced to drop the prices, <laughs> weren't they? By the they didn't the drop media. them on the on on the uh, the other well, stuff. Physical media, no, yeah. just on what, the cloud based a, stuff. What does a company like Adobe do with the shop front anyway these days? Well, they have some dude sitting there with a making Photoshop pictures. 
Oh, yeah, no. but anyway, like that, that's, that's got to be a Photoshop picture. That one. <laughs> no, I think it's uh, they've got a they've got uh, didn't they open that? Isn't there a data center or something there as well? So they've got a few computers there that spit out something or other. But uh, but anyway, they've opened the up cloud a, services. Opened up a, a floor of, in some building. So well, I can't understand if you know if they're getting a lot of flack and they're going, oh, the rents are crazy and all this, and that's why the prices are dearer. Why can't they just move out into the burbs a bit? You know, maybe maybe there's yeah. no, no maybe it's of, only ADSL. Sydney Harbour, the harbour's not as good there, is it? <laughs> no, well, this, this is very true. Now, um, as as I said before, that that the tech giants, Apple, Microsoft, and Adobe, they have been summoned to a price inquiry. Uh, that this was formed in May last year. So this is I'm just giving you a big overall picture of um of the, this whole story because I think this is going to get interesting. Uh, now, the three companies are required to attend a public hearing. This is something they didn't want to do. And they haven't done, and they're required to appear in Canberra on the 22nd of next month. So keep your diaries free. <laughs> Microsoft and uh, Adobe have both provided submissions to the inquiry but declined uh, a public meet. And uh, Apple requested a private closed-door hearing with the committee and has not provided a public submission. It was probably the first time anywhere in the world uh, IT firms are now being summoned by the Australian Parliament to explain why they price their products so much higher in Australia compared to the US. So good on us. I reckon. Good Boys, get your us. hands out of your pockets and get in here now. Yes. <laughs> this is the, yeah. Yes, pretty much. This is what they're doing at us. They're laughing at us. <laughs> yeah. right. Now, uh, anyone else got any uh, stories uh, around the joint? Yeah, well, well there's, uh, there's the something I've been hanging out for for ages. There's a, an application on Linux, and it's been out for years, called Wine. And basically it stands for Windows Emulator. And um, uh, and it, well, actually, it stands for Wine is not an em, is not an emulator, but everyone knows it as Windows emulator. And what it allows you to do is run Windows and or Windows based applications on Linux. Um, now, the uh, the guy who invented it, the original developer, has but <coughs> excuse me, has uh, pretty much said that he's working on a Android version now. So okay. what it basically means with the, the processing power that we have in phones these days, you know, uh, you, you know things like um, the you know the these things are quad core 2.6, you know, the full on full blown computers effectively. And um, so basically, what they can do now is you can run pretty much well, once this is up and running, you'll be able to run Windows. Windows and Windows-based applications. So if you wanted to, you could run the whole, you know, Windows operating system, like Windows XP or Windows 7. You could actually run on your phone, um, which you know has other benefits as well. Things like you know, if you've got uh, a particular program that only runs in Windows and you want to take it on the road with you or whatever, you can do things like that. Um, so I think it's going to be fantastic. Uh, it, it's going to... I can't see how it's going to fully work, though. Uh, I, I, look, it sounds right. like it could be good, but it also sounds to me like the practicalities would be ridiculous. I mean, unless uh, you had one of something... these sort of phones that you could dock to a larger screen, um, the touch interface to... Well, uh, you can on most... On any yeah, I mean, Samsung, you, it's, it's Samsung it's phone, and that. on most new phones, you can run them on a, on a HDMI output, or yeah, with a lot of Samsung well. stuff, you can actually just run it directly wireless um yeah look it's not going to be it has some some things that i find fascinating like one of the, the the accounting software that we use for work for example can only be run on windows which means i'm tied to at very least i'm tied to a laptop you know mm. and mm. it's that's too cumbersome and bulky for me surface so, will surface exactly go the go the brain. yeah three hour battery life fantastic um so basically you know it's not not a it would be f fine with you know the screen on this thing's plenty big enough to to use it because I actually use um, TeamViewer on it now, which is effectively like using Windows on your phone except you're using data. Um, but you know I think for some of the applications and some of the uh, some of the things that are out there. Oh and well, no no doubt that would be that'd be great that'd be you know that'd be great mm -hmm. but I, but you know when it comes down to the the. the into intermingling and interacting with the hardware, I think that might be an issue. I think it's the UI that ends up being a problem. Yeah. Because you know how how yeah how how thirsty Windows is. Like, is it really gonna? Go well, I don't know. I mean, you could run something like 
like Windows XP, for example, there's a what they call a PE edition, which is a yeah, performance true. edition. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and that runs fine on a Atom netbook, 1.6 netbook. It runs amazingly fast on that with 256 meg of RAM and a 1.6 gig processor. So, uh, and that does, you know, it does quite well. So, I think if you want, for example, if you wanted to run uh, a publish, you know, um, publisher or Outlook Express or just some of those programs that people use and don't really think about it, but th- there, there's kind of equivalence, but there's not that program. Mm. And a lot of people want that experience of having that program, which is what's kept Linux in, in, on the back burner in a sense. As fantastic as the Linux operating system is, it doesn't have that program. Mm. Yeah, but no, I think you're with right Wine, in respect. You know. So, so with Wine, thing you've is, got it now got and, it. and Linux is still in the back burner. You know what I mean? Well, even less people know about Wine than they know about Linux. Yeah. <laughs> but part of the thing is, and you don't have to run Windows. You, you can run Windows applications without running the whole Windows. So you can keep the Android experience and then run, say, your business software or run your... VPN that only runs under a Windows client, you know, because mm. some businesses have that. So, yeah, I think... Um, well, that'd be good. So, yeah, so that, that's obviously good because I remember emulators, you know, I used to get uh, Apple emulators the old, in the old days. You know, on the, I mm-hmm. think I had an Atari ST, you know, they come out with Apple emulators so I could play the Wolfensteins and Sammy Lightfoots and all that sort of <laughs> stuff. I think... <laughs> well, that's, I mean... Emulators are good. MAME. Love it. Yeah, Love it. well, that's it. There's MAME, there's the Nintendo emulators, there's, you know, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, all sorts of emulators for your iOS devices too, you know, to, to run those old... Mm. Yeah. But with, yeah. with running, say, running Publisher, for example, or your, your particular line of business software on a Linux, on a, on a Android device, you're still going to have the problem of how do you actually interface with that software. You've got software that's designed to be on a, on a laptop screen or at very minimum with a keyboard. So you're still going to be either carrying around a keyboard or trying to hit these tiny, minute little targets for the file and, you know, for the actual... Well, no, because it'll work. And it works on Linux the same way. You can resize it. So you'd resize it. It will have pinch and zoom capabilities the same as, as mm. Android does natively. So, especially on a bigger phone like the the Note 2 with the big screen on it, you, um, you know, as I said, I use Team, Team Viewer now. And even if I run a full 1080p desktop on this and use it in this size, it actually is still usable. It's really small, but it's actually still usable. And once you pinch and zoom, um, now You're the away. thing is you might be doing movie editing or photo editing or something and you need that massive processor and you just want to... Um, you know, you don't want to do that here, but you want to say you, you've compiled it or whatever and you want to just show the movie or you want to show something that's only in a Windows-based mm. application. I mean, it's not going to be an, a, a program that everybody's going to use every day, but it's something that is really going to benefit. I mean, there are still going to be I.O. issues. You know, you're going to have to have... Well, you don't have to, but, I mean, as it is, you can use an external keyboard and mouse, mouse either through USB, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth now. So... Um, the other thing it would, and I just thought about, the other thing that it could actually be used for is a, a virtual system. Because these things are so powerful, there's nothing stopping you from using a program um, like web desktop control or something like that that actually controls the phone remotely. And there's nothing stopping you from using effectively a dumb terminal with the processing power that your phone's got. Yeah, I suppose. So yeah. you could have a, a, you could carry your Windows computer around with you and then effectively you just log into it from a from a dumb terminal or from a you know something like that. So, hey, if nothing else, it'll be pretty cool. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. right. Well, now Apple Apple has also released another urgent iOS <laughs> update. Have you heard about this one, Garth? I think that may be what's so wrong the 4S, with the four S. I think. The yes, that's 4S right. Four S specifically. The oh, geez, you're, one one. You're a crosser, aren't you? You are a crosser. Can't remember what it was for though. Apple iDevice users, especially the four S's, can expect a small over-the-air update this week to sort out connection problems. Uh, yes, 6.1.1. I think quite a few issues overseas. Yeah, the 6.1.1 iOS update, 23 meg in size, and has been tested by carriers according to this report. British Vodafone has warned its customers over the weekend via SMS alert 
and uh, support forum posts that the 6.1 update may cause problems on 4S handsets and ask people to hold off installing it. So there you go. Hey, hey. Users who have installed 6.1, me, uh, but I'm on 5 anyway, <laughs> <laughs> have, have complained of overheating devices and reduced battery life, while enterprise users with iPhones connected to Microsoft Exchange service and uh, blah, blah, and it goes on. And, um, but yeah, I've also had uh, uh, iPad issues as well this week. So there must be a bit of a dot. Yeah, remember I, I spoke to you about I plug it in and it just shows not charging. Oh, uh, yeah, there's no issue there. That's that's an issue. That's not an issue. It never it's still <laughs> charging, right? It's not an issue. It, do, it is still charging. Basically, listeners, his, uh, his motherboard hasn't got quite enough juice to make the iPad think it's charging. Yep. It's yeah. dead charges. It's still... Have yeah. you got the, uh, the dual head cable? I'm having a wine now. With well, the two it, USB <laughs> slots, it, the two USB on one end and the output on the other? Yeah, but the thing was, it used to charge. It used to work. It's worked since I've had and it. And I bet you it charges just as quick as it is. It's probably maybe a slight difference in how iOS is reporting whether or not it's charging. Like, mm. it, it'll still be taking in a charge. Yeah. And I bet you it charges in just the same amount of time as it used to, unless yeah. your, your motherboard is actually... Well, I was going to say, it is possible because those USB devices... Those devices are not meant to be charged off motherboards. It even says that they're not meant to be because they draw so much power. And it is possible that they will they will damage capacitors on the motherboard. Mm, okay. Yeah, it could have. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's well, a in in, in, uh, <laughs> in, in, uh, in opposing that comment, they I have normally they it gets charged off a powered USB hub, and uh, you shouldn't have any. Which isn't isn't really all that bad because USB only delivers 120 milliamps or something. You need like an amp but, or more than an amp. It's only now that I've just realised that I did update to 6.1 just last week or whenever it was and now I've got issues. Yeah, so I mean, it's possible. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I bet you you'll find that it's charging just as quick as it is. It's just that they may be being a little bit more conservative in how they report whether it's charging. You know what I mean? It's, it's better than it saying it's charging and it's not. Yeah. True, true. And it'll still be slowly <laughs> charging. It'll just be too, how slow it's charging. Now, Which is one, one problem I had with my phone when I first got it is it, you plug it into... Uh, I had a couple of cheaper um, cigarette socket uh, USB chargers. They weren't the high amperage, like one amp ones, or the normal 120 milliamp ones. And it actually said it was charging. But you'd sit there and you'd watch it, and the charge would drop. <laughs> so <going> <laughs> it was plugged in, but it, it didn't have enough current to actually charge it, even though it was telling you it was. So, yeah. So That was fixed yeah. by a proper, uh, a proper charger, car charger. All right, now uh, moving on, Garth, did you... You see um, HP going to be going to Android oh. to try again at the old... Uh, <laughs> try again. Try again. Ba -ba. So try they, again. Bought, they bought WebOS. Try. That's put right. Put out that... What the hell was that thing even called? Palm Pilot. No, the... <laughs> I don't know. Might no. have well been. What, that tablet thing that they ran... Bought, yeah, WebOS tablet. What was that tablet. called? Yeah, the thing that um, they sold for $90 or something. Everyone ran yeah. and got it hoping they can put Android on it. Successfully That's right. did. Um, chucked out that leader of H, but that um, that ID. I well, that executive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Chucked him out. Bought it. Sold off WebOS. No, gave it away. Gave it away to the open source. Don't know that much has happened with it since. There's probably still a few people out there who are loving WebOS. It still exists. You, you buy some of the look at some of the new HP printers. Playbook says. Uh, you still see the little tablets. Playbook. They actually that's give the one. Yeah. They, yeah, Playbook. They give you a tablet with Thanks, the, some of the new HP printers. So <laughs> that's actually the, the software is still on those. So they're still using it. Mm. Yeah. So, But it's open for um, – it's, it's put out to open source now, though. So, you know, mm. hopefully there will be someone actually still maintaining it. There's so many of them out there. Why can't we just concentrate on Linux or just one of them? And we might get something well, it's, decent. It's a different – you know, it's for a, for a tablet, though, isn't it? It's not going to be – I don't know. Mm. Is there we've – got, we've got Android, I guess. Um, well, yeah, yeah. So, but no, they're going to. So HP have chosen to go with Android, and will be trying once again to enter <laughs> that market. But I mean, they've got some. They've got a lot of competition out there, haven't they? They've got Asus. They've got all these other companies well, also doing these Android tablets. Yeah, that, that's got a. That's Dell has a, tried and not gone far. Well, it's a bit of a kick in the guts, do you think, for Microsoft because HP's been a bit of a a, a big Microsoft partner. Yes. And do you think that maybe this decision has been brought about by? Microsoft's decision 
to siphon the Surface and the Surface Pro only through Microsoft channels rather than through the partner channels. Maybe they've seen, well, well we can't trust this they, Microsoft they can't. mob. Oh, excuse me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I said they can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, what do, you, what do you, I mean, how is, how is Microsoft going to put, put, you know, Surface Pro through HP channels? Mm. It's not going to happen. Well, they, they, it's still there. I mean, HP is still free to make those. It's more of a reference device. Mm. And clearly with the numbers that Microsoft have been putting out of them, you know, they're sold out of the mm. 128 gig. So I don't think they're planning on swamping the market with their device. They're just, here's a reference device. Mm. So... I don't know. But I know the channel's not happy about no, it. No, well... But anyway, that's just how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, everyone. But that's the dog coffin. <laughs> not mine. <laughs> um, all right. Now, Will, did you have a story? <clears throat> I have an uh, interesting little... Uh, yeah, I guess you could call it a story. Ah, HP Touchpad, uh, sorry. HP Touchpad, yeah. Playbook was um, uh, pre- Blackberry, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's HP Touchpad. Yeah, Blackberry Playbook, yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, (laughs) A prisoner was detected smuggling a mobile phone inside his bottom after the guards heard the device ringing. (laughs) (laughs) Couldn't he have put it on silent? Dear (laughs) Or vibrate at least. (laughs) Oh, dear (laughs) dear. Dear It's probably vibrating anyway. It's probably calling himself. (laughs) 50... (laughs) A fifty yeah, he's <laughs> anyway. A fifty eight year old convict had concealed the phone or along with the hands free in his body cavity. The items were discovered when prison guards in well 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 jail in Colombo, Sri Lanka heard a suspicious ringing. Guards <laughs> knew he had a phone in the wrong in the wrong end, an unidentified <laughs> guard told the AP. Would you have said an X ray Would you have said to the guard when it came out, would you just turn around and said, Oh, it's for you? <laughs> Does it mention the, whether uh, it was an Android Note? Was it was, well, it, I mean, <laughs> was it one of the Note Two? Yeah, it was the, the yeah the Note Two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pre-release. Um, uh, yeah, the the uh, X-ray taken the, the X-ray taken of the prisoner in a local hospital reveals the phone and the handset in all their glory, and there's no word as to what happened to the to the phone. Now I'm just quickly going to uh, to show you this. This picture because I didn't have screen sharing set up in advance, but um, a booty call, <laughs> <laughs> a booty call. But uh, yeah, so there's the phone, oh, so God. you can see. Goodness. God, there's sometimes um, you're glad you can't see, isn't it? Yeah. Well, if you figure it out, that's your hip bone, that's your hip bone, and the phone's two thirds as wide as that. <laughs> so he must have had a lot of practice <laughs> of opening the hole so it was big enough to take the phone. If you know what I mean. Apparently. So anyway, oh, let's it, you'd have to. It's not a natural. It's certainly not. Oh, you know, really? one of those, <laughs> not natural. Not, not natural, but it's not one of those. You know, things. My brother's an ambo, and he says it's amazing how many times people say, "I just sat on it sat on the on couch." Yeah. yeah. You know, like you know, it's it's not one of those things that looks like it's a, a yeah a huge BlackBerry or something. That's crazy. It, it's got a keypad. You can see the keypad there, so it's something with a keypad. So it'd have to be a BlackBerry, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, dear, oh dear. Blackberry play- playbook. <laughs> well, anyway, oh, playbook. Let, let's move off that one. <laughs> Look, I've, I've, got, I've got one here. Um, now, Kevin07, he, he's back. Well, well, you know, he's always been there. Back with a vengeance. Well, there, but look, this story here goes, Kevin Rudd is starring, is starring in viral videos, right? It's viral videos, the big headline, viral videos. And when you get down to the, down to the guts of the story, it's got, oh, one of his videos was 11,000 views. I hardly think that's viral. That's not viral. That's, that's, I don't know. For a, a slight head cold, maybe. <laughs> that's, like, that's right. For a poly, it probably is. Yeah, oh, true that. Well, yeah, but it's not. But you know, but of the now twenty videos of, of the twenty videos uploaded this year to Rudd's YouTube channel, a key publicity a key publicity plank of the two of the Kevin O Seven campaign in two thousand and seven. Fifteen have come since the January thirty election announcement. Yeah, racking up more than eleven thousand two hundred views. Now, I don't know if you can all read that, but there's a there's a graphic up on the screen there. It's just Julia Gillard just just goes through how many uh, followers and so forth uh, Julia and uh, Kevin, Tony, and Malcolm have. Obviously, Kevin's got by far the most. 
Uh, but um, yeah, it's look, he's he's playing the social media and he's pl- he's playing it well. Look at that, Kevin I mean, Rudd, one point one nine million followers. I've followed him on Twitter for quite a while, and it's usually decent stuff. It's mm. I, I follow Gil- Gillard too, just because it's I feel I have to, um, and it's just crap that goes up on her ping. But but Kevin Rudd. 99 percent of his tweets are his tweets that he has done, um, and they're informative. They're useful. You know, they tell you something constructive. Mm. And if they're not, they're funny. Like he puts jokes up. He puts up, you know, got up this morning. My dog had eaten my shoe. You know, like it, he's normal. a real person. Yeah, just yeah, normal. That's right. Know. Yeah, well, that's what you so, want to hear, isn't it? But um, yeah, but we're looking at Tony Abbott here. So um, yeah, look, I think I don't know. It, it, do you think this plays a big part in? In results, did, did you think that? that um... Well, I don't know. I'll tell you what's strange. I'm look, just looking at his channel now, right? Kevin Rudd's channel has 164 videos in total. Mm. Um, he's got 100,000, nearly well, 103,000 views. But the odd part is he's only got 250 subscribers. <laughs> now, that seems a bit weird. Like you would think that. S- and I, if I, if you could look at that statistic, I would bet that three quarters of those would be newspapers and and yeah. media outlets. Subscribers, yeah, yeah. 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 It, I, I don't know that quite... many people are subscribing in YouTube yet, though. It's not, you know, they go to YouTube, but do they really? Do, do, does the normal person subscribe to a particular? Person I have two hundred followers, so, and I don't really, you know, there's, no, I don't really do a lot, and I've got two hundred. Mm. So what I'm saying is. Given that he's got over a hundred thousand views, it's just weird his subscriber count so low. Um, yeah, I, I mean, all his videos—they're all. I'm just quicking through it now. There's, you know, a, a lot of it's all backstage stuff. It's like he, the Valentine's Day one he put up. There's backstage at the Heart Foundation, you know, and most of them only have, you know, ninety views, hundred views. I think um, like why why he's probably kicking you know, goals is because he's actually. Doing stuff, he's tweeting stuff of say relevant to his life, rather than say the others just tweeting stuff Press as advertising. Yeah, you know? yeah. So he's yeah. advertising That's through it. relevancy or irrelevancy, but the others are the are um, advertising. They're using it as a form of a press release, basically, mm. as opposed to here's my life. Mm. Yeah. Well, now the PM. Well, I'll just quickly have a look at the Julie Gillard channel while we're, we're sort of talking about them. Um, all up, she has uh, 30 videos, mm. um, of which most of them are either news appearances or um, stuff in Parliament. And she's got 37,000 views, but she's got 350 subscribers. Yeah, right. So... So, mm. <laughs> so well, Twitter, she's, she's got 334,000 followers... 154,000 Facebook likes, uh, and I think, look, I can't read that from here uh, on that graphic there because it's only a lot real small on my screen here, but you might be able to see it. But uh, it's um, apparently she hasn't put any videos up since the announcement of the election. But Rudd's put 20 um, up, was it? No, that's 20? not true. She has Chinese New Year four days ago. She has one um, Australian college. Okay. After that, message from Prime Minister. So she's got three videos up since then. Yeah, yeah, but ruddy. But they're crap. They're like yeah. they're like one minute videos. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, she should put the one up when it's fallen over, smashing a face. But they've got seven hundred. They've got seven thousand five hundred views. Mm. Well, I suppose people. So they probably just link. You know, it's like. But anyway, let's move on with that one. While um, we're on politics, Glenn. Yes. See this, um, Julian Assange. Hmm. Formally announced his uh, intention to run for the Victorian Senate. Oh, he's well, going Victoria. Uh, no, hang on. It's, well, the Senate, the, the National Senate, but yeah. through Victoria. Yeah, okay. Um, meanwhile, he's locked up in, well, he's in a, uh, some embassy in, in England. In England. Yeah. Um, but Tim Neal, who apparently is the deputy director of the Democrats, who's also been a Senate candidate, yeah. Previously, has are they still around? Democrats. Yeah, sorry. Well, I don't know that the Democrats are around too much <laughs> anymore, but Tim Neal's filed on his behalf his intention to run for the Senate. Right. For the WikiLeaks party in Victoria. Do you think that that's going to have a chance? Not n- none whatsoever. No, <laughs> but I'd vote for him. 
Yeah, um, he, he's obviously not going to come back to Australia for it. He, would he get some type of immunity? If so he... I think if he was, no. let's say he was to get in, he is able to <clears throat> choose someone to stand in his stead. Right, right. But yeah, that's what it'll be the second preference, or whatever yeah. they call it. But as soon as he uh, steps foot outside that embassy, bang, off to Swap. Sweden. Off to Sweden he goes. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, well, I don't know. They let Julia Gillard run the country and she's under investigation still, so who knows? Mm. All right, now, Google Schmidt is going to sell 42% of uh, his ownership in Google. More. <laughs> what did you call him? Google Schmidt? <laughs> no, Google's. <laughs> oh, Google Schmidt. <laughs> Google Schmidt. <clears throat> okay. I'm like, hey, I'm Googled. listening to the plex at the moment. And he's not in there. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, uh, a move that could potentially net him $2.4 billion. Uh, shares of Google were down $4.11 uh, on Friday, down to $781. Oh, Whoa. dear. It's terrible. Now, Schmidt, who served as the chief executive until 2011, currently owns roughly 7.6 million shares of Class A and Class B common stock. Now, whatever that is, if you don't know what that is, you can Google it. The shares represent... Because we don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got a clue. The uh, shares where's represent... Where's Eric when you need him? That's right. Yeah, the, that's right. The, so anyway, there's just some shares. So anyway, they're worth $2.4 billion. The shares represent 2.3% of Google's outstanding stock and roughly 8.2% of the voting power of the Google stock. Right. Now, I was about to say, oh, okay. I was about common, common stock is the corporate stock, so the voting shares... Right. So, but he what did he say? Two point three percent of the stock and eight percent of the voting power. Yes. Wow. Yes. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, given well, yeah, because not everybody who's a shareholder has yeah, vote has like can rights. vote. So yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, Schmidt changed the role at the company, and the amount of his wealth tied up <laughs> in Google stock. It was not unre. This this is his I don't know his financial advisor or something some bloke going on. Uh, so I'll, I'll start that one again. Uh, so this this is what. Uh, Oh no! It's it's Web Bush's securities analyst. So this is what the Web Bush security analyst has said. A Google Schmidt and a Web Bush. <laughs> oh dear, it's getting worse, isn't it? I don't, I don't think it's. You did a, a, you did a what in your what? I don't think it's worth giving that to the pronunciator. I don't think that's uh, <laughs> that's that's gonna that's going anywhere. Won't end, won't end well. No, uh, given given Schmidt, this is so. This is what the analyst has said. Given Schmidt's changed role at the company and the amount of his wealth tied up in Google stock, it was not unreasonable for him to diversify his holdings. As good as Google stock is, it isn't as good as cash if you want to buy something. I reckon if you dropped that much stock on the market at once, you'd, uh, you'd soon see that price drop a bit too. Yeah, well... Well, yeah. I mean, that's what happens when stock becomes available. Mm. And there's quite a bit of it there, apparently. But the thing is, does it, you know, if it, he's just earned two and a half billion, I mean, does a million dollars matter? Oh, God, no. Not to oh. him. You know, like, is, is a million dollars going to be a problem at the end him. of it? Yeah, no. <laughs> yep. He well, must, I don't think there are, well, it won't because it's only a temporary drop. He must want to buy something. He must want to buy, I don't know, a jet. I don't know. Who Another company or something. <laughs> yeah, but once, don't forget, like they've dropped. But as soon as yeah. people start buying those shares that he's got sold, the prices will go up. So, you, you know, it, it all balances Maybe, out. maybe he's he's going to buy Stickem. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's 11 cents well spent. Now what? <laughs> now, uh, Garth, did you have any anything else tonight? Um. You it's made mention of another uh, with that 6.1. Microsoft suggests fixes for exchange issues with iOS 5. U iOS, iOS 5, sorry, iOS 6.1 6. with the iPhone 5. So there's apparently there's issues with Exchange on the iPhone 5 with 6.1. Right. And Microsoft's suggested fix is to block them. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. So and don't so don't. Don't make any calendar appointments on your iPhone 5 if you're syncing with an Exchange server. Yeah, exchange, right. I think it's only Exchange um, 2010 that mm. the issues are occurring with. But um, so yeah, there's been a few little hiccups with iOS 6.1 apparently. Yeah, oh, well, they'll, they'll sort it out. That's what they paid the big bucks for. <laughs> Did you see the latest Windows? Like that happened? Was it yesterday or whatever? It's the latest uh, Patch Tuesday that coming up? Yeah, 57. There was. Yeah. Wasn't that mad? There was like 57 critical and then there was like 13 optional. Jeez. 
<laughs> yeah, it's um, Microsoft. If we, now, if you haven't if you haven't re, restarted your computer or whatever, I'd suggest you go and head along to the Windows update. Uh, Microsoft this week delivered a, a huge amount of security updates. As Will was saying, twelve patches that address fifty seven vulnerabilities. Oh, geez, that's a hard word. Now, catching the eyes. <laughs> Catching the eyes of security researchers were two of the critical patches that address vulnerabilities in Internet Explorer, a common vector through which criminals serve malware. Now, apparently they're pretty, anything to do with Windows uh, Internet Explorer, they're pretty quick to jump on and try and, uh, yeah, sort. They have to be because there's so many of them. Yeah, well, yeah, there is. (laughs) That's right. I mean, I can't believe they've been making an Internet browser for close on 20 years, and it's actually getting buggier. Oh, it's not too bad. Like, I don't have... Well, <laughs> I don't see the vulnerabilities, but I don't... Look, I, I, I use it every now and then. I don't, I don't mind it. Like, it's, it's okay. Yeah, well, it's still, like, pretty high up there in the browser rankings, but I wish people wouldn't use it. Yeah, it no, causes so right. many problems. You know, the amount of times I, I repair systems and something in the Internet Explorer, whether it's one of the poorly written toolbars or whether it's something that somebody's installed to do with Internet Explorer, mm, the amount yeah. of time that that happens is, is ridiculous. You don't What's see that problem ridiculous? with... Well, no, that's because a lot of the, the vendors for malware and so forth, they're always, you know, you go to get an update and you've always got to be unticking yeah. this toolbar and that toolbar oh. and, you know, it just Was it we installed uh, Uvu last night and they wanted to install the Ask toolbar? Mm. Yeah. But I couldn't even install it. I yeah, you. That was weird. Yeah, I wouldn't install. It said everything. Every time I went to install, I'd get the web page come up and says, "Thanks for uninstalling." <laughs> <laughs> and keep it like that. <laughs> yeah, it didn't install, so I, I go. Go I, away. Okay, so I go. Okay, I'll go search for the shortcut, you know, and I'll just put the short. I'll just run it from the shortcut. Okay, didn't didn't do that for me. So, but there's no. There wasn't in the program folder. There was no Uvu. I don't know. I can work yeah, it that out. was special. That was. I think. Um, <laughs> Well, because, see, I run, I was, look, admittedly, and this is where a lot of my problems come from when it's funny things like this, is that I'll run in a in user mode rather than admin mode. Um, mm. Even though you put your password in for the ad, administrator, uh, I think sometimes it still doesn't work. VidBlaster is the same. I can't install VidBlaster. If I want headaches, I'll install it in a user account. But I don't want headaches. Yeah, no, you yeah. need to. I'll install it under the admin so account. So you're that person that actually uses user accounts. I knew there was one. Yeah, I, th- I like them. I think they're they're an <laughs> integral part of your security. Yeah, no, they're, they're not I, really. They're no more. Sec- they're only to stop physical people who are physically sitting at the system. That's mm-hmm. the only difference it's going to make. And if you have physical access to a computer, there's no security, so it doesn't make any difference. But no, but I'm talking about uh, if you've got a user account. I'm like, obviously there's tools out there where you can just you can reset the admin passwords and stuff. So that's, yeah, obviously if you're physically, you, you can get through it. But I'm, I'm security more of the malware and stuff. Like if you're in a user account, it won't automatically run or can't yeah. because it hasn't got the privileges. That's right. It hasn't got access to your, uh, to, to install. So the that's where I come The real issue with UAC from. like that in, <clears throat> yeah, you but know, is unfortunately. that people get used to just clicking yes. Mm. That's, that's right. That's the whole Mm. To me, I mean, and, and that's the problem, you, and that's what. But no, for someone like Glenn, who's not going to just sit there clicking yes, who's I mean, actually going to go, yeah, okay, somebody wants to run, and I'll actually think about that. Yeah, it's it's. I think it is still a handy piece of. Yeah, um, but I mean, you're not going to have that problem anyway because you're going to know where you are. But and that's what I was about to say. Like all, all the every single system I fix that has a problem, they're logged in as a user, and they've still managed to destroy their system. So. It's pretty much completely irrelevant because people just click yes. You know, you might as well just give them an admin account with no user access and you haven't got to worry about it because mm. you, if they're going to have a problem, they're going to have the same problem anyway. No, mm, I, I'm know. on the other side of the fence. Yeah, I don't I'll, know um, about that one. I'll do user <laughs> accounts. I like them. Well, I run them. I run them here. I've got them in Windows. Well, Windows 8 is a little bit different now, isn't it? Because you sign in with your, with your Microsoft Live account. So much. I don't know too much enough about no, Windows. Well, you can, or you can. You can still do it the other way because I was still signing in normally. Yeah. Um, because, but I didn't. I didn't actually sign in with my Microsoft user account. I signed in normally. Well, so, I chose. I don't have a Microsoft account. Yeah, well, I chose to do it with the account because then, uh, isn't isn't that's then all backed up? Like all your all your all your um, settings, yeah. You go and log into yeah. You go and log into another Windows 8 machine with your ID. 
Yeah. And yeah, there's there's all your settings, preferences, the whole lot's there. Yeah, so that's where yeah, I was coming nice from. Way to do it. Well, I've got a. I think that is the Microsoft account is set up as the user account, and I've still got another admin account uh, on the Windows 8 machine. I'm that's I'm surprised, Will, that you're saying that most users out there are using user accounts. I would have thought your general Joe off the street turn it mm. on, and it there's it only admin. has the one. If if there's only one account, which typically there would be, it's going to be an admin account. Yeah. That's right. And no password and it'll just and boot no up. Password. Yeah, boot straight into mm. an admin account every time. That's that's that would be the typical well, configuration. I would no, expect. No, a lot of the systems I fix are family computers, so everybody's got an account. Yeah. Okay. You so know, and depending on who's set up their account, it depends on whether they've given themselves admin privileges or whether mm. they've put a password. So they're all different variations on the theme. The problem is. The end result is the same, regardless of whether it's a user account, regardless of whether it's an admin account, regardless of whether it has a password or not. Um, it's if one person causes a problem, everybody's going to have that problem. Yeah. So it's it's kind of irrelevant. It doesn't really make any difference. The only the only physical difference to the system is when you log in, you get a different desktop. That's about the the only difference in terms of any problems or anything that's going to occur, it's going to happen across the board anyway. It's not going to stop anything. Um, and if they're smart enough to figure out how to turn off UAC, they're probably logged in as administrator anyway. So, I mean, it, you know what I mean? Like, it, but you're not... Yeah, but I'm just... I'm coming... That, as I said, I'm coming from the fact of the, the, the non-physical threat, the, the, the malware and... The... You get a bit of malware there that wants to run an executable. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pop up you with some notification that that's going to happen. Yeah, I guess so that's so. where I come from anyway. There's plenty of attacks. But as you said, they're just going to click still. yes anyway because they mm. want to go to that website. It's saying you've got to click OK to go to this website. They click OK. <laughs> that's right. So, oh, yeah, you can't. The you, one, um, yeah. one thing I do like having the separate accounts for, and I've used the Windows Live account, is with the kids. Turning oh, yes. up And yeah. using the family safety because mm. I you know, set time limits. They can't download without me you know, giving permission. Can't visit mm. certain websites, that oh, sort of stuff. That, that works as I well. said, they're, they're a... Uh, most of the systems I do are all family-based systems where they, that's the exact reason they've set up the accounts, yeah. you know. But at the end of the day, that's pretty much all it's good for. In all honesty, in a business situation, you'll never use it. And in a normal home situation, short of using it for that thing, you're never going to use it. So, yeah, I mean... Well, I could say, no, but I could say, well, I use it. I'm using a, a different user account now than what I use through the day. Yeah, but you're not a regular user. Neither am I. We're not regular users. Because mm. I've got this, know, I'm, this, I'm, this account that I'm using now is stripped back, you know, back to the um, to the standard Windows look. You know what I yep. mean? Like there's no bubbles or, or... Well, that's the way I run anyway. That's my, mm. my default look is that I don't turn on any of that crap. Because mm. I turned all that off. So the CPU's, you know, got uh, as much, much as it needs rather than doing yeah. blue borders and, and rubbish all over the place. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did you have another, any more stories, Will? Um, yeah, there's. You guys remember Motorola, don't you? They used to make phones once upon a time oh, ago. Oh yes, yeah, vaguely, <laughs> vaguely, yeah. yeah. Somebody, somebody um, bought them, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Google well, kind of, you know, yeah. just Google kind of took them over. Um, but you know, Mo Motorola was still Motorola Mobility was still doing its own thing. They were still making the Razer M and the Razer HD, and you know, continuing on the same path, hoping something will change. Um, but basically, now what's happened is. And Google's basically gone, well, hang on a minute. We have this phone company sitting there not doing anything. Um, why don't we make a phone? Yeah, right. So basically Google has said to Motorola, you know, make me the most powerful, structurally right. sound, f fastest, flashiest thing yeah, you can been, come up with. Is it going to run Android? Uh, it's going to run <laughs> vanilla. Vanilla Android, so it uh, won't have any of the, the crap on it. Mm. Uh, so it'll be like their Nexus variant, except it won't be limited. It'll be a regular edition. Mm. Um, they, at the moment, they're calling it the Motorola X. But, this, this, uh, been, this has but, been bubbling away in the background oh. there for a while now, hasn't it? And I can't yeah. wait to see what happens when it, you know, uh, I mean, what they actually... It wasn't, the, it wasn't in that X-ray, was it? Motorola X. That could have been what <laughs> it was, you know. That's why he was I mean, smuggling it. it. That's it. Oh, no, back, to buttons, the, back to buttons, It was boys. a publicity stunt. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, given that other companies who, who are doing such marvellous things with, you know, they're pushing the boundaries so far now with the Note, with the, 
you know, the um, Galaxy with, you know, all those phones that are, are doing such an amazing thing now. Can you imagine if this comes together correctly and it works the way it's supposed to work? I mean, it'll be a game changer for Android. It will be an entirely different operating system effectively because the, the, it'll be the first phone that will be... Android totally. will be written and the phone will be designed... Mm. Well, sorry, the phone will be des- built and then yeah. Android will be written yeah. specifically for that phone. Hardware and software. The marriage of hardware yeah. and software. Yeah, it's under the one roof. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, I was talking and, to a um, Motorola rep a while ago, only a couple of months or so ago, and I'm saying, you know, so you know, since Google have bought you guys, has there been much change? Said, oh, yep, 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 I don't walk for Motorola anymore. I work for Google now. And um, so, you know... So they've lost, are, they, was, are hey, you saying they lost their identity yet? No, I, I think he was buying the, um, you know, Apple have the Apple aid. What do, what do Google have? <laughs> well, that's, that's what I was just about to say. If, if you think about it, like they've had the Nexus, which has been kind of okay, but they've never really had much control over the handsets. They've just been a top-end handset, you know. Um, realistically, this could be the Android equivalent of the iPhone where they have control from start to finish of a device. Yeah. It's really their first and last chance to get this right. That everybody's been saying for a long time, this is what they need to do. So, well, this, realistically, the same, it's the same thing. It's applied to Microsoft. This is that, that's what they've done. They're, they're yeah. sick and tired of hardware not working with the software. So now they've brought out their they're married their software and hardware together, and hence the surface. And come up with a three hour battery life. Yeah, great. That'll, um, that'll fix that. <laughs> but it's a powerful little well, machine. Make... It's a powerful little tablet. <laughs> And the, fu- the funny yeah. thing talking to this rep was, though, that he was pushing the, um, what are they called even? The Razer HD and the Razer M. I'm yep. saying, well, how come it hasn't got Jelly Bean? You know, Jelly Bean's out there now. He's like, oh, no, this is the way Google wants it. ICS is what Google wants. This is... Okay. No. <laughs> it was just it was just. It In was other crazy. words, our phone's very hardware limited, and this is yeah. the latest thing that'll work on it. Yeah, it, yeah, it was sort of like... <laughs> Who are you trying to convince, mate? Yourself or, or me? So yeah, has, exactly. Has, has Motorola uh, still got uh, tap, uh, phones out there? Yeah, they're still and going. It's not physically not a bad device. It's not, you know carbon fibre shell and okay. quite a nice. They're um, okay. Yeah, I, I, but I, still, I was kind of right. turned off one. But they, they've got a. I don't know if they've got a Windows. I don't know if they, they have a Windows phone, but I don't know if it's a, a newer one or if it's an older one. But they had a Windows phone as well because a friend of mine's got one. Um, and But for my money to look at, they look too much like the Nokia N8, mm. well, the, I'd, the new ones. I'd, I'd like to go and uh, have more of a, a deeper look at the Windows phone 8. I think that's gonna. I think that's good. I think that'd be good. I did show you that picture of, the, of that one that uh, was at JB Hi-Fi when I was getting my new phone. Um, you know, the one that the, the one that the snow crashed. So all you saw on the screen was oh, snow. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was their display phone for Windows 8. Oh, seriously, yeah, well, <laughs> a crashed one. Someone's crashed it on them. Yeah. But um, all right. So um, so that's good. Now, any more, Will? Because I've got one more before we go. Uh, you do yours. I've got a couple more, but I'll find I'll find a shorter ones. All right, uh, Garth. Did you have any more before we go? Um, see, Opera has given up on their own. Um, browser? Yeah, well, not so much the browser. They're still doing the browser, but they've gone to WebKit rather than developing their own uh, rendering mm. engine. So it takes it from four down to three, three you know major rendering engines. We've still got obviously the what's based you know Microsoft's, um, and Gecko is still there from Mozilla, but now we've Firefox, got Google, yeah. Apple, and Opera all using WebKit. So they've already started adding code um, and, and updating. Yeah. the funny thing is they're all using WebKit, but Chrome's the only one that doesn't have the vulnerabilities. So Apple's done something Chrome's doing its own it. Adobe stuff. Apple's, yeah. Apple's is, yeah, you still need to put in Flash yourself. So well, not only that, but every year when they have the Black Hat conference, um, Chrome, I think once it's been gotten into, but... Year after year, Safari gets hacked easily. So they, they, even though they're both yeah. using the same backend, 
Well, we've just got a, a chat here, Joseph, in the lounge. Opera has dropped chat client on the Mac. Garth, Wouldn't they had a chat me. client on the Mac? Oh, I don't know. There you go. They dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't care less. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Um, oh, all right. Dear. Now, well, my, my last story of the night is the BBC. This is a oh, great, brilliant, great, excellent, out of this world news. BBC announces a Doctor Who 3D special. How good is that, eh? How good is that? Um, we will be, <laughs> we will be able to take we'll, we'll be able to visit the TARDIS in 3D in a special 50th anniversary episode of Doctor Who later this year. I thought they were getting rid of 3D TVs. But anyway, um, no. the the Doctor Who celebrates its 50th birthday in November, the 23rd, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. But it is not the first time viewers have had the chance to see the Time Lord in 3D. There was a 3D uh, story. In 1993, which marked the 30th anniversary, Dimensions in Time, I wasn't aware that that was 3D. And um, I didn't know that was 3D. No, so um, you probably can't see it in not, 3D. Probably not here, probably out ones. in the States. Or England, be in England. Well, yeah. the 30th anniversary yeah, was before the new series, so it probably would have... 30th anniversary would have been, what? 20 years ago, let's... 2000 and... No, 93. Yep. Yeah, so that's yeah a long time before the new series. But anyway, yeah, so keep, in, keep your eye out for that. That's going to be the, later this year. So, wahoo. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Now, the one Maybe. story I have to mention, <laughs> I can't believe I forgot. What was it? Back to the Future. Oh, huh? yes. Friday, Friday, 1st of March, 9.30 p.m. Go to your event cinemas, your Greater Union, Birch Carol Coil. It's one screening only, $11 for a ticket. I've already purchased mine online because I can guarantee if I rocked up there wouldn't be any. And uh, what, so why are they um, why are they doing this? Is this the year that um, yeah why why, oh, why why are they doing this? Just, uh, yeah, just is this the year they went to or something? Or is it just a um, they're doing it just for the hell of it? I think it must be actually yeah. It must be some kind yeah, of well reference. I know it's coming out on Blu-ray, so I don't know if it's got anything to do with that. No, it's got to um, be something in the movie. You know, I'd I'm like trying to, to remember. I know the movie Back to Front, and for the life of me, do you think I can think of the date they went to? I think that is when. I don't know where my bloody um, hovering. Sir, um, what's the name is, though? Eh? Your Mattel hoverboard. Yeah, where's that? <laughs> Mattel, it? it's, a, it's a government conspiracy, you know. That... <laughs> they took them all. They took them all. Jeez. I signed um, up. Ripped off. I signed up for that e health thing. Has anyone ever done that? No. E health. Oh, you get all your, all your medical and stuff online. Okay. And it tells you what doctor you've been to, when, and what you've bought at the chemist and all this sort of stuff. Not when you've been to backyard doctors, it doesn't come up. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Glenn. I will. I, don't, I, don't, I tend to stick to the backyard doctors. I, uh, actually, I did sign up for that. I haven't chased that up. I'd forgotten about it. I read about that a couple of weeks ago again. It reminded me to do it. Yeah, I, saw, I signed up. So it's, yeah, I don't think you can get any more out of it than what you could with Medicare. I think the main, the main advantage is that I think the doctor... Can they write notes on there or something? I'm not too sure. But you can you can also you can decide who sees it, like what practitioners or what medical staff see it. So, you know, if you've got a you got something going on and you don't want your general practitioner to see it, I think you can exclude him. You know, take him off the list or something. I don't know. But um, but I don't know. But it, it's supposed to be pretty good. Like it's, you know, if you move town or something, all your records will follow you. So rather than you know some doctors, you know some doctors they don't pass on the records. They just go, no, don't, don't, don't have to, don't want to. Really? Yeah. Hmm. You go and ask your records, see if you can find, get your records out of a doctor. Uh-uh. It's hard, pretty hard. It's like getting your yeah, teeth pulled. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, so Back to the Future is on at the cinemas. I'd like to see more old movies come out at the cinemas, you know, more of the retro ones. You know, can't they put well, they do one... with Grease, remember, too. Yeah, just put one aside, one cinema aside, you know, and just it's, have the retro it's, room. Yeah. We always Instead used to of have remaking, the drive-ins for those, didn't we? Mm. Is it Instead illegal? of remaking the ba- movies really badly, they need to, yeah. you know. Well, for the life of me, like, I haven't seen that new Total Recall, but for, I, I've got no idea why they would want to remake that. No idea at all. Maybe make it well, in 50 years. but Total Recall, they're doing Dirty Dancing, they're doing uh, mm. um, uh, Footloose, up. they did... You know, they're out. supposed to be doing Rocky Horror. Yeah, right. You know, like, why? Why not just re-release them? Look at the, yeah, you know, no, that's I, what they did with... I, in general, agree, but all the redos of um, Sherlock Holmes lately have been awesome, haven't they? The, the various oh. Holmes have the, have, Is that the American one, the one you're talking about? The uh, I like the English one. Elementary. But the elementary. American have one... you seen Elementary? Yes, I have. 
That is awesome. One of the only shows I watch. Yes, I have seen it. That, yeah. that is amazing. It took me a couple episodes to get my head around the fact that it's American. I was waiting for them to Americanize it. Mm. No, it's good. But show. um, yeah, oh, no, it's it was not fantastic. A bad... Yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. I like the guy. He's um, he's smart. He, he sees around a few corners. So yeah, it's that's good. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> All right. Uh, any more before we go? Nope. No. Last call. No, sorry. I'm I'm on the Back to the Future website now. That's it. I'm done for out. the night. Oh dear. All Over right. And out. <laughs> No, yeah. no file colon slash slash slash. <laughs> no. Now go just, just out. Just yeah. hard hard cut, hard cut. <laughs> hard <laughs> out. Hard out. Is it hard out? Is that what we're talking hard about? Hard out. That's it. That's it. Yep. Uh, we, have, we have a hard out. Okay. I'm, I'm not at that yet. But uh, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> now, uh, Garth, how can we contact you? You can contact me, Garth at AussieTechheads.com.au or um, follow me on Twitter, iBlindTech. Um, oh, what happened to at Garth Hum? Uh I don't know, I've got too many Twitter names. That's the which, which, which one do you want to be known Go for or? iBlindTech. That's the one I'm actually using. Oh, great. So all so those just, reviews, all those the Series 3 iOS reviews, I'll put Garth Hum. Never mind. <laughs> Still get there? They'll get me. Series 4. Series 4. <laughs> okay. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't bother me. All right, and Will, how do we find you? Uh, there's a few different ways. You can just either email me at uh, will at Aussie Tech Heads or Twitter uh, at Mr. Tomkinson. Uh, look me up on Facebook, it's William Tomkinson or, on Facebook. Or, or shout uh, really loud. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Just stand on your front veranda and yell and holler I'll for either a turn marshal. up or someone will tell you to shut up. One of the two. <laughs> holler for a marshal. <laughs> holler for a marshal, there you go. <laughs> will will come running. <laughs> holler for Will. And uh, you can uh, you can get me at glenn at aussietechheads.com.au. Eric and Shane as well at, at aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, Twitter at Aussie Tech Heads. Don't forget the Aussie Tech, the Aussie Tech News Twitter account. Facebook account uh, forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, there's, um, yeah, look, I'm going to start posting some good stuff into that Facebook account. I'm going to look for some, you know, free apps of the day and all that sort of stuff every every time I come across one. Um, and that's about it. That's about the end of the show, I think. No more from everyone. Everyone's hard out. So. Hello, if you are, if you do happen to be uh, in Whitaker in Calif in the States, you can buy Principal Strickland's 1985 house from the Back to the Future. It's for sale at the moment. Oh, mm-hmm. really? Oh, there you go. Oh, no worries. Jump mm. on that one. All right. So, <laughs> do the conversion. And yeah. So that's it. Good show. Thanks, Will. Thank you, Garth. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you, listeners. Thank you, Lounge, for coming in on this warm Thursday night. It's great. All right. So until next week, <laughs> another episode has been recorded, and hopefully we'll have a full complement of the host back next week. So until then, it's bye-bye for now. See ya. <laughs>